Is Islam a dangerous religion? Let's see what Dana White has to say. I think it's scary and it's dangerous and I think it's all bad and uh, it should probably all go away. You can believe in whatever you want to believe in, in, in life and the afterlife, but uh, religion is, is dangerous. In the last video, I addressed a blanket statement made by UFC President Dana White that all of religion is scary, it's dangerous, and should all go away. So I decided to take a look at the religions of the world and see if Dana White's statement applies. Last time we talked about Christianity, and today we tackle Islam. Let's get into it. Is Islam dangerous? If you do some basic research on Google, you're going to find nothing but good things about Islam. And Islam does have a lot of great practices. For example, the five main pillars of Islam are great. Shahada, or profession of faith, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. Salat, or prayer, Muslims pray facing Mecca five times a day. Zakat, or alms, Muslims donate a fixed portion of their income to community members in need. Psalm or fasting during daylight hours of Ramadan, adult Muslims are required to abstain from food and drink. And lastly, Hajj or pilgrimage, every Muslim must make at least one visit to the holy city of Mecca. But for some reason, you won't find this on Google, and that is some of the very, very problematic teachings that are central to Islam. First, we have Sharia, which is Islamic law that is embraced by a vast majority of Muslims and is implemented in 15 countries. Wherever Sharia is embraced, oppression of women, religious minorities, and ex-Muslims follows. Cruel and unusual punishments are employed and fear is used to control the population. According to Sharia, if you're a Muslim who commits apostasy and renounces Islam, you will be killed. Women have unequal rights in divorce, inheritance, freedom of movement, freedom of dress, and freedom of employment. Sharia enforces blasphemy laws stating those who criticize Islam, including the Quran or Muhammad, should be killed or severely punished. And that's not even all of them. I've only mentioned a few. There are many, many more barbaric laws. Just want to remind you, if you enjoy my content, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to help me reach more people with the truth of the gospel and the love of Christ. Second is Jihad. Islam is the only major religion in the world to have violent resistance or violent jihad embedded into its sacred scriptures and endorsed by its founder, Muhammad. Jihad, meaning violent struggle, is prevalent in the Quran, Hadith, Islamic history, and modern day Islam. You will never find any Christian, Buddhist, Jewish, or Hindu followers committing violent jihad. Violent jihad is a very unique to Islam. There are many quotes in the Quran and Hadith supporting jihad. If you read them in context, as I suggest you do, it will only reinforce their support for violent jihad. Quran chapter 9 verse 29. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day, and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful, and who do not adopt the religion of truth, Islam. From those who were given the scripture, fight until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled. And then the Hadith Sahih Bukhari 453-386 says this, Our Prophet, the messenger of our Lord, has ordered us to fight you till you worship Allah alone or give jizya. And our Prophet has informed us that our Lord says, whoever amongst us is killed shall go to paradise to lead such a luxurious life as he has never seen. And whoever amongst us remain alive shall become your master. And Sahih Bukhari 4, 50. The Prophet said a single endeavor of fighting in Allah's cause in the forenoon or in the afternoon is better than the world and whatever is in it. And there are many other verses. Now, while the majority of Muslims do not support jihad, it's very clear in their scriptures. And the minority that do support it still equal to well over 300 million Muslims worldwide. The goal of jihad is simple to spread Islam until it conquers the world and all non-Muslims submit to Islamic rule. Third and final is Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is the only founder of a major religion who was a warlord and a military leader. 
Like other military leaders of his day, Muhammad committed many ruthless acts. Islamic biographers revealed that he warred with neighboring tribes, ordered assassinations, killed prisoners of war, exploited women and children, gave his blessing to violent religious jihad, and made people slaves. And I'm not even going to talk about Muhammad marrying a six-year-old child and consummating the marriage when she was only nine. Islam teaches Muslims that Muhammad is the ultimate role model and they are encouraged to follow in his footsteps. Now, this is very dangerous and it should come as no surprise that Muhammad's support for violent acts is a significant source and inspiration for violence committed in Islam's name. If Muhammad had preached non-violence, to love people, or to live in peace, then we'd have millions of Muslims around the world acting like Jesus. Because Muhammad was the antithesis of Jesus, we have tens of thousands of Muslims acting like warriors instead. So, is Islam dangerous? This is where I'm going to have to agree with Dana White. Yes, Islam is a dangerous religion. The Quran and the Hadith teach and promote violent and oppressive ideologies. One of the reasons is because unlike Christianity, which has gone through many reformations, Islam has not really had any major reformation that compares to Christianity since its conception over 1400 years ago. There was the Wahhabi movement in India in the 19th century, but it promoted a reversion to an even stricter and more radical form of Sunni Islam. Sayyid Ahmed, its founder, condemned the Western influence on Islam and tried to purify Islam by eliminating all the un-Islamic practices that had crept its way into Muslim society. So it was more like a degeneration of Islam to an older and more radical state. The sensitive question, should Islam go away? Without the problematic and dangerous teachings and beliefs that Islam promotes, the world would be a much better place. Just looking at majority Muslim countries, we see common practices of slavery, capital punishment for apostasy and critics of Muhammad and Islam, whipping and stoning of adulterers, mutilation, crucifixion, domestic violence, and no freedom of speech. Many Muslims argue that Islam is a religion of peace, but when we look at Sharia especially, that is not the case at all. Sharia is the heart and soul of Islam. It is rooted in the Quran and Hadith. Muhammad himself practiced a form of Sharia. Rejection of Sharia and a reformation of Islam would require the legal hierarchy in Islamic nations to discard many passages in the Quran and the Hadith. And we know that they cannot and will not do that, which makes Islam a dangerous religion. Stay tuned for the next video where I answer the question, is Hinduism dangerous? If you want to support what I do, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and follow my social medias in the description below. Thank you for watching, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you.